Hey, this is Kenneth. Last time, talking about repeaters, um, I went into some detail on the duplexer and the filters in it and what they were really trying to do. What I glossed over was what happens in the real world when your duplexer really should be doing more than just passing the you know, uh, just rejecting the opposite frequency from your two devices here. Um, most of your issues that you're going to see is power coming back into your transmitter. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about circulators, which you would generally put right here, is you put what's called a circulator here to prevent any power from coming back out uh, out of your duplex or into your transmit radio. Um, there's kind of there's generally two different sources of this power. Um, one of which is another transmitter nearby. You know, so if you're at a radio site, there's going to be lots and lots of different transmitters. So if there's another antenna right next to your antenna and it's transmitting into it, um, you're going to see a significant amount of power that can get through the duplexer, and all that power going into your transmitter. Um, would possibly make your transmitter a little bit unhappy and uh, will cause what's called intermod or intermodulation where their frequ uh, th this transmit frequency will m mix with your transit frequency and make all sorts of different frequencies which tend to be problematic when you know like their third harmonic minus your second harmonic is someone else's actual transmit you know receive frequency um, which is a whole different kettle of fish, but you know, for, suffice it to say, if you could somehow stop all frequency, all of these other fre uh, transmitters nearby you from even getting into your transmitter, um, that would be advantageous. And then the second use of a circulator would be if something were to go wrong with your antenna, you know, so like if it were to age and drift out of frequency a little bit, or if it were to fall off, or if the coax were to fail, or if ice were to, you know, you know, actually get stuck to your antenna, which is not unusual at radio sites. So, you know, if you have ice on your antenna, the frequency of your antenna would change, the impedance wouldn't be 50 ohms, and your transmitter would see quite a bit of reflected power. And so what we want right here, and the role that the circulators um, fill, fulfill, is as a, a one-way valve on RF power. RF power can go from the transmitter into the duplexer, but anything that happens to come out or bounce off of the duplexer back to the transmitter um, gets dissipated into a, uh, you know, a, a load connected to the circulator. Right? And so we're talking here about a three-port device. One port is an in port, another port is the out port, and then the third port um, is your you know, load, right? And so what happens is the input goes to the output, but the output, instead of going back to the input, actually goes to this third port, right? Um, and there are you know there are instances when it is sometimes useful that the third port happens to come back to the first one. But we're just talking about, you know, specifically for repeaters. And so what we're most interested in is this one-way valve sort of action. Um, how this actually works is that you have a triangular section of conductor inside of it with a strong homogeneous magnetic field passing through it, which causes radio waves to kind of to to bend around uh, circularly uh, and make it go from here to there and there to here. If it seems like I'm glossing over this, it's because I'm kind of glossing over this. I, I never did get a strong mathematical understanding. What I do have for your entertainment is this is a 900 megahertz um, circulator or what's all it's also often called an isolator because the third port here um generally rule of thumb if it has three rf connectors on it it's called a circulator if it has two rf connectors and then it has an integrated load here it's only it's called an isolator right and so this one is specifically designed for power can go from here 
to here and power that goes from here goes into this load resistor. Um, this is okay for blocking the other transmitters here, but unless you're using a relatively small transmitter, um, this wouldn't be so great for protecting you from the antenna failing since um, if you have like a you know 10 watt you know 10 watt or 50 watt or 100 watt transmitter here and your antenna falls off, all of the power here goes out to the failure and then reflects back into this resistor. So if your antenna falls off of this, this resistor here is dissipating all of the load that you're transmitting with originally. Right. So I've I have cracked the uh, epoxy on this. So this the metal shell here slides off and what we're presented with is um, a ferrite magnet on each side. I can just kind of try and extract it here for you. All right, and so this um, milled, you know, it's got, it's got a, a milled uh, chassis here with a, just this is a, this is the magnet with two plates of metal on it there, which are presumably to help homogenize the magnetic field. Same thing on the other side here. So there's the other magnet. And then what you'll notice is we've got these two magnet holders with a space between them. And what is in this space is, um, this is, I, unfortunately, I, this used to be perfectly triangular, but I, I cracked it. Come on. I cracked it when I was trying to get it apart, but we have this uh, triangular piece of ferrite, and then this is the triangular piece of uh, piece of conductor that goes between here and here and here to there, right? And so, um, based on this magnetic field, which is going, you know, straight down through this or straight up, I'm not going to try and get the polarity right. Um, the RF power tends to circulate around this and go from one port to only the next one, All right? Uh, so that's what it looks like on the inside. Um, this one is relatively small because it's for 900 megahertz. Looking at a UHF circulator, um, this is actually a three-stage circulator um, slash isolator. Um, in that we've got one stage here, one stage here, and one stage here. So you put your transmitter on this connector here. You notice it has a tiny load resistor here. So this is really a, an isolator stage. This is a second isolator stage. And then this one has an has a end connector here. So this would be your circulator stage. And so generally what you would do is you would um, hook this up right here to your to a big beefy you know fist sized 50 ohm uh, termination your antenna goes out here and so from your transmitter you could if the antenna were to fall off all the power would go into your nice big uh, load resistor here and then you get two additional stages of broadband isolation that doesn't need to handle the, the power of your transmitter because it's getting handled here right and so that's what a this is the kind of the scale of a UHF circulator. Now there is one problem with this as I've presented it. You, uh, circulators are not at all linear devices. And so when I take this transmitter operating at 440 megahertz and pass it through the circulator, um, it doesn't just pass through it unadulterated. It tends to the circulator tends to generate harmonics of whatever signal you pass through it. And so beyond, so right here, you need to put a low pass filter. Um, this isn't something that needs to be, you know, a cavity filter. It doesn't need to be profoundly good, but you do need some sort of roll off here um, to prevent your second and third and fourth harmonics getting through. Um, your uh, low pass filter will generally look something like this and so tying it all together so your transmitter goes here you got your one isolation isolation 
um, circulator. So this goes down to your termination. Uh, you have your you know your your dummy load here, and then right before your antenna, you've got a basic low pass filter here. You know five seven uh, uh, order low pass filter, so that then um, any of ge the generated harmonics in here can be attenuated you know quite a bit here just by a couple resistors and inductors. Um, this this you know, this is a homebrew filter that I made myself. The circulator I pulled out of a um, old radio site, uh, but in the video description below, I will include um, the part numbers where if you were to build an what this was what's called an intermod panel um, from a company like uh, Telewave, and money were of no object to you, um, what I would recommend using. Just kind of give you a good specific example for a UHF repeater, um, but yeah. So this is this is a circulator. Um, they come in all different sizes. They tend to be relatively specifically tuned, and so uh, just like how you need to tune your duplexer for a specific frequency pair when you're ordering your circulator, it behooves you to specify to the manufacturer your fre uh, what frequency you're going to be trying to pass through it because they will often um, get to deliver it to you non-tunable and so they you need to tell them what to do uh but yeah so that's circulators uh main thing that people tend to leave out of the conversation is this low pass filter other than that thanks for watching and i'll talk to you next time oh and uh leave any anything in the comments for what part of the repeaters you want to see next because this is kind of the two filtering parts that i had in my queue and so at this point, I'm trying to figure out what, what we want to talk about next. So as always, thanks for watching. Bye.